Welcome to the Cardiac Emma Learner Series, a unique video tutorial program under the aegis of Indian Association of Cardiac Imaging. This program is focused on beginners and intermediate images with learning happening through short sessions and case-based discussions. We are grateful to experts from different parts of India who have helped us in putting this program together. Please do feel free to give us your feedback so we can continually improve such training opportunities. This session is brought to you by Dr. Unkar Oti from Ruby Hall Clinic Pune. He is a consultant radiologist with special interest in cardiac imaging. He finished his fellowship training for level 3 certification by the European Association of Cardiovascular Imaging and has published more than seven articles in peer-reviewed journal and has written a few textbook chapters related to cardiac imaging. He is also an executive committee member of the Indian Association of Cardiac Imaging and has delivered multiple talks in national and international conferences. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Unkarauti and I am going to discuss the role of T2STAR MRI in iron overload assessment. What we are going to see uh, in this talk, the background of hemoglobinopathies and thalassemia, why we, uh, we should do T2 star MRI or any iron overload assessment in these patients, and how we actually measure the iron overload in particular tissue using MRI technique. Hemoglobinopathies include diseases like thalassemia, sickle cell anemia, pure red cell aplasia. The prevalence of beta thalassemia in India is quite high, is around 3 to 4 percent, which can be attributed to the consanguinity and the endogamy practices. In thalassemia, there is a deficiency of hemoglobin synthesis. So, all these patients will present as a features of anemia in their lifetime. And to decrease these features of anemia and the symptoms, the patients will require regular blood transfusion throughout their lifetime. So this particular anemia is referred as a transfusion dependent anemia. Due to the regular blood transfusions in this patient, there is an excess ion entering into the body. So this ion converts into the form of free radical ion and it deposits into the heart, liver and other endocrine organs. So this excess ion when it deposits into the liver and heart, it can lead to the cirrhosis and the heart failure which is a major cause of mortality in patients of thalassemia. And when it depo deposits into the endocrine organs, there is a significant amount of morbidity in this patient due to the diabetes and the pituitary failure. To decrease the effects of iron overload, we have to start chelation therapy in these patients. But for chelation therapy to be uh, very effective, there has to be an accurate quantification of iron overload in these tissues. There are few methods of iron quantification. First is the serum ferritin, but serum ferritin is very non-specific and non-sensitive investigation for the iron overload. It rises in acute febrile conditions as well, so it is very non-specific. The liver biopsy is a gold standard investigation to assess the iron in the liver tissue, but it is an invasive in investigation and the patient cannot undergo repeated liver biopsies in his or her lifetime. On the other hand, MRI is proved to be an accurate technique and it is also a non-invasive technique for the iron overload quantification. One study I need to uh, highlight over here, the study is done in UK and um, they have done study for two decades and they have showed that there are there is very marked improvement in the survival of patients with thalassemia major which is due to the reduction in cardiovascular deaths. And this is mainly attributed to the appropriate intensification of ion chelation therapy based on accurate and regular quantification of ion in the myocardium and liver using the T2STAR MRI technique. So how we actually do it on the MRI, the patient preparation, um, all the metallic wares and the electronic wares has to be outside the gantry. There is no particular patient preparation, there is no need of NBM. As this is a non-contrast investigation, there is no need of uh, IV line or serum creatinine examination. Breath hold is the important step. The patient should uh, hold the breath for at least 10 seconds and it, 
the patient should be guided and instructed as per the norms. The scan time is around 5 to 10 minutes. So it is a very short investigation. There is no contrast involved. And we use the T2 star technique to assess the ion overload. T2 star sequence is a gradient eco sequence. This sequence contains multiple images with sequential TEs. Usually 8 to 10 TEs are involved for the uh, in the myocardial T2 star MRI sequence and 10 to 12 TEs for the liver sequence. The main factor to consider here that your first T should be as minimum as possible technically and there should be a minimum T interval in between this. So at our hospital we use for the liver T2 star sequence the first T is 0.7 and T interval of 1. However for the myocardium the first T is 2.2 and we take around uh, 8 T's for the myocardium up till 15 milliseconds. T2 star as you know the T2 star effect that because of the magnetic field inhomogeneities there is a dephasing of the protons due to the T2 star effect. So when the tissue ion overload increases in this per, in the particular tissue then there will be increase in magnetic field homogeneities. So there will be more dephasing of the or the more T2 star effect will happen and there will be a loss of signal accordingly. So because of this there is a gradual decrease in signal intensities. So if the ion overload is more there is a more steep decrease in the signal intensities. So this decrease in signal intensities uh, this phenomena we used to calculate and quantify the ion overload in that particular tissues. So whether to use a 1.5T or the 3T scanner is the issue. 1.5 Tesla is a gold standard for the ion quantification as far as MRI is concerned. However, there is a very good correlation between the 3T and 1.5T values. But very severe ion overload patients, there are more artifacts in the myocardium on 3 Tesla images. And also during the quantification, it will give only two values uh, for, the, for the ion overload quantification. So on 3 Tesla, very severe ion overload is present. There are some limitations. So the first preference to use it as an ion overload assessment is a 1.5 Tesla machines. However, the 3T machines are also very good and the values are very well correlated with the 1.5T. So this is the T2 star MRI sequence look like. You can see there are 10 echoes applied at the in the slice of liver. The first T is being 0.7, the T interval is around 1 and it has gradually increased till 9.7. So if you carefully assess these images, you can see the intensity of the liver parenchyma decreases as the T increases. Okay, let's see, uh, this is the T2 star uh, MRI sequence in the myocardium. Only five echoes are taken for the representation of the concept. So the case A and the case B, the first T is around 2.2, we have taken till 10.6. So you can see there is a decrease in signal intensity of the myocardium in case A and as well as in case B when the T time increases. But if you notice that the decrease in signal intensity is much more in case B compared to the case A. That means there is an more ion overload in the case B compared to case A. So this is called as the qualitative assessment. Now we see the quantitative assessment how do we actually quantify. So as we know, if the TE time increases, your signal intensity decreases. So these are the three conditions where there is a mild ion overload, moderate ion overload and very severe ion overload. So you can see this graph of decreasing the signal intensity is becoming steeper as the ion overload contents increases. So by determining the slope of the graph, we can actually quantify the ion overload in that particular tissue. R2 star, so this is a graph showing the R2 star, R2 star uh, represents the relaxation rate is nothing but 1 divided by the T2 star. Okay, to go with the uh, calculation you have to draw ROI in the myocardial as well as liver slices. So in the myocardium to draw an ROI the mid septum is preferable as it is less amenable for the motion. The ROI should include as much as portion of the myocardium. Uh, as possible 
it should not include the cavity and it should away from the blood and the myocardial interfaces. For the liver, the ROI should be uh, within the liver parenchyma, it should be away from the margin, it should be away from the vessels and the biliary tree. So, when you draw this ROI and propagate it through the slices, you will get a particular signal intensity for that particular TE. Quantification of ion overload, there are multiple softwares available like quanta hematology, CMR tools and FUNC tool. There are some Excel spreadsheets also available which are derived by researchers and there are some freeware which is easily available on the internet. So, this is a, a freeware at the isodens.com. So, you have to select here what you are assessing. So, I am assessing a liver. I have a 3T machine. So, on this column, it is a column of TE. So, my first T is around 0.7. I have taken 10 equals till the 9.7 and the corresponding signal intensities of the liver in ROI are from 300 to 120. Uh, according to the TE and the signal intensities, we have obtained a graph. So, on the x axis, it is a TE and on the y axis, it is a signal intensities. So, the graph is quite good. You can see the red line is covering almost entire points, which is represented by the R2 value. So, the R2 value is, is very important in this particular um, in this particular assessment. The R2 value should be more than 0 0.98. The largest or the maximum R2 value is 1 when your graph goes in a straight line. So, according to this investigation, our T2 star is T2 star value is 21.8 and the liver ion concentration is 1.4. So, according to according to this table, we do not uh, there is no ion overload in the liver tissue. Let us see the other data set. So, now, we have considered all the graph or the points in the C, but you can see this point is very far away from the graph line and your R2 has decreased to 0.87, which is not acceptable. So, we have, there is a method called as the truncation method to optimize the study. So, here we have considered from 1 to 10 all data sets into the calculation. So, here we are going to decrease one by one data set. You can see this manual truncation to 9 readings. Then when you decrease it, your R2 value keeps on increasing. Just to be on the other side, the T2 star value currently is 5.1, which is considered as a mild ion overload. So when we are increasing, the R2's value is increased. 0.92 R2 value is still not sufficient. We need more than 0.98. Okay, so this is R2 of 1, so which is ideal. And now all the points we have considered only 3 readings for our calculation. Now the T2 star value is 2.3 and it is in the moderate category. So without using the truncation method, we would have called this ion overload in a mild category, but actually it is in the moderate to severe category. So the truncation method is very important. Okay, the another these are the excel sheet evaluation again showing the importance of truncation method. So, without the truncation method your T2 star value is 3.3 and it is in the moderate ion overload category for the liver. And when you apply the truncation method you can see the R2 is 0.99. So, it goes into the 1.1 T2 star. So, that becomes the severe ion overload. So, the truncation method is very important to apply whenever you are assessing the ion overload using T2 star MRI technique. These are the different gra grades of the liver and the heart and they have divided into the mild, moderate, severe based on the T2 star and the R2, R2 star values. The pancreas is very susceptible for the ion deposition in this patient. This is the same T2 star sequence we use for the liver. The similar method can be applied here also and the R2 star value less than 100 hertz signifies the ion overload in pancreas. So, in summary, T2 star MRI is a very safe technique. There is no radiation involved, no contrast involved. It is a non-invasive technique, very short examination, maximum of 10 minutes. So, we can do it in pediatrics also. 
uh, it gives a reliable and accurate quantification for iron overload in the particular tissue.